Hello, today I have the pleasure and the privilege of meeting with members Dick and Susie Schumacher. They are members of the club in Horseshoe Bay for 26 years, right? And I think we also had a special birthday last week for you, Dick. Yeah, that's right. That was a big one and uh, not too far behind, but you got a youngster next to you. I can share your birthday, right? Yeah. I can say how old. Right. We celebrated 104 last week. Right, and it's okay if I share also, Susie? 97? 96 now. 90, okay, going to be 97, she's a youngster. <laughs> a youngster. So before we kind of get started, I'm, I'm curious about how you ended up in Horseshoe Bay. How did you find Horseshoe Bay? I, well, uh, I sold my business, and I was looking for a place to retire. And we had friends uh, in Dayton who had moved down here and wound up at Blue Lake. And then we came down to visit them, and that's how we found uh, this area. And at that time, that was, I can't remember, you said the year, but I think uh, at that time, Horseshoe Bay was the Yacht Club and 45 homes. And it was more of a resort, and we we came from a suburban co co community. Change. And uh, it just didn't seem like Horseshoe Bay was the right fit, so, so we built a house out at Blue Lake. And we were there for 13 years. But uh, after a few years, our activities became more over here. And uh, eventually we joined the club then. And uh, uh, that, so that, that's, that's really how, how, we found, how we found the area was by mutual friends. Which I think is common, that happens, right? Yeah. And you were um, a golfer and a tennis, well both t tennis well, and I golf. I didn't play any golf and, and, and neither did Susie until we came down here. Because uh, I was I was busy, uh, there wasn't time for golf. We we belonged to Dayton Country Club, who played tennis, and we also belonged to a tennis club there. But uh, it, it, it didn't take much time. I could come home from the office and go down to the tennis courts and, and play tennis for an hour or so. Right, tennis does and, give and, you that and, opportunity. And, and, and go golf meant taking the day off. <laughs> you know, you know. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. True. Um, do you miss playing golf? Not a bit. <laughs> yes, I do. She, 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 You're she, missing she, tennis. She, she, she enjoyed it, but I, I didn't like the frustration of it. You know, hit the ball, go find it. And... <laughs> Did you have a favorite golf course? I would say it would be Slick Rock. Right, and we are on hole number like seven. seven on mm -hmm. Slick, a beautiful location, perfect spot. Mm -hmm. And tennis, do you miss your tennis, Susie? Oh, I miss it all, yes. I bet, I bet. And you were involved with, did you say it was the nine hole golf club? Nine hole, yeah. All right, so both tennis players and golfers. I love that. Okay, so before your life here at Horseshoe Bay, tell me a little bit, I know we were in the service, I'd love you just to mention a little bit about that and kind of a little bit in your career path. Well, uh, I graduated from Ohio State University during the depth of the Depression. The unemployment rate was 20%. Uh, I majored in banking and finance, and there were no jobs open in that field. I finally found a job in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and I was there for about three years, and then came the war. Came the war. And uh, I, I joined the Navy and the Supply Corps and went to, the, to their Supply Corps school. It was the first school they had at uh, Harvard University. Uh, and then was assigned to uh, to the Navy uh, shipyards in Philadelphia in, in the supply department. And from there, I was in, in Philadelphia for, I guess, a couple of years, two, three years, then uh, out in Seneca, Illinois, where they were building LSTs, and then I, uh, commissioned a ship uh, in 1943 and spent two years in the Pacific. And we, we participated in eight major assault operations, starting with Tarawa and ending up with Iwo Jima, uh, Mariana Islands, Saipan, Tinian, the Philippines in between. Uh, and, uh, and when I, I was sent back to, to, uh, to the States in Baltimore, and then, then uh, I had a friend who was a, my college roommate, had a business in Dayton, Ohio, and I joined him in his business, which was construction equipment and uh, supplies. So uh, and then that 
continued until I retired. I retired when I was 60. My son did, didn't want to come into the business. Okay. And uh, so uh, I found somebody that wanted to buy it, and I sold it then and moved down here. So along the way here, though, when you were in Baltimore after the Navy, is yeah. when we met Susie? Oh, I was still in the Navy when I, when I met her. There were two, two ladies who thought that, that the Navy officers need, needed, needed someplace to go. There was, there was a UFO or UF, is it a UFO again, for enlisted personnel, but nothing for officers. So they had, they had this officers club, which was, was met once, once a week. And uh, you were supposed to, a place where officers could meet, nice girls could meet the officers. I asked Susie to dance. She whispered her telephone number <laughs> in my ear. And later I called and went out and her family was up at Fisher's Island and, and I took up residence in the boys' house. <laughs> we were chaperoned, her sister was there. But uh, that, that's how, how it went on. And then, well, maybe it gets hot in Texas, it gets very hot and warm. <laughs> oh, Baltimore. Well, we're human. Yeah. But so this is now 74 years. Right, we're married 74 yeah. years ago, all this right. happened, so yeah. that's terrific, that's terrific. I love that. So a little bit about Dick, when I did a little bit of research here, uh, you were named Honorary Past President Associated Equipment Distributors, 1977, President of Lano County. No, 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 1970. Oh, okay, 1970. And then President of Lano County Municipal Utility District. I, I think that was right. Okay, great. And then 1982 to 83, that's why I think when that happened, served to Lieutenant Commander, United States Navy, yeah. 1941 to 45. Right. All right, and an honorary um, Rotary member today, served over 50 years with the uh, Rotary Club. Uh, the secret to your success, both of you. You're both, I mean, well, one of the four ninety six. We talked about that, and we said that the one, the one thing that has run through our marriage is, is that every day before, when, when we go to bed, the last thing we say to each other is, I love you. For 74 years? Yeah. I love that. I love that. And the secret to just your health and your uh, longevity here? Uh, both of us, I think, have always had good health care. Uh, and, uh, Meaning like maintenance, just always take always, keep staying ahead yeah, of it? You know, when, when I was in business, annual physical examinations and, and that sort of thing. So, so that we've always been on top of the, top of the health uh, situation. Mm -hmm. Except for the polio. Except, except for that. Susie had polio in the 1950. And uh, she got along pretty well with that uh, uh, an, a, a neurologist who lived up the street from us uh, told her that she would never have the use of her left leg again but we had a three-story house in in dayton and all the steps and if you come to the basement it was four stories uh so you went down to the basement and then the main floor and the bedroom floor and then another oh my goodness. In the attic. and going up and down those steps uh, strengthened her leg to where she she was playing she was playing tennis. Uh, she couldn't move, really, you know, couldn't run for a ball. But if it got close to her, she got it. <laughs> so, so that's what that helps in tennis. Yeah. Well, I was always in that league. Yeah. So, including lacrosse and hockey. Okay. Okay. Oh yes, when <laughs> when I went out to to take residence at Fort Club Road. Uh, it was just up the street from the Baltimore Country Club, and uh, they had 20 grass courts. They played 10 and rested 10. And she took me down to play tennis and beat me. <laughs> she was just playing on the... And you wouldn't play with me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Well, let's see, what did I not ask you that would be fun to share with fellow members? It's been a pleasure watching the growth of Horseshoe Bay. From the time that we came, the little 40, 45 homes, here's a house and the house over there, uh, to where it is today. Uh, we miss the, uh, the uh, closeness of the early days. When, when, when we ask a party, we ask everybody in town. <laughs> and, and everybody in town is about 400 people, maybe. Right. So, so uh, uh, 
Uh, I think the greatest thing was, as the years went on, is that when a big party was given, everybody was asked, including widows and widowers. So, real sense that of community. Real, real sense of community. The way people met people really was to introduce them. So, was there a favorite restaurant or place that you would go to most often at some point, or, you know, when you were real active well, at the club? Of course, a hotel came along well, much after we were here. Uh, but earlier, you know, going to the Eye Club. The Eye Club, because yeah. that's really all there that was, was right? So let's let's talk about a little birdie that shared with me, like that maybe you do enjoy a martini once in a while. Why don't you share every, a little bit about that? Every night, <laughs> not just once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> but I limit myself to one, one okay. one's enough. Occasionally, I might have one. We had friends, we used to go up to Idaho. And we had friends that were from San Francisco, but he used to say- They were from Salt Lake City. Isn't that All right, doesn't make any difference. Uh, but he used to say, uh, "Have a happy, happy, laughy." You didn't, you didn't have another full drink. You had a happy, laughy. I think I'm going to adopt that. I like that. Uh, happy, laughy was half of everything. It wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't just uh, half, a, half a drink filled up with, with mixer. It was half of whatever. whatever you were. <laughs> I'm definitely incorporating that. Yeah. I like that a lot. Perfect. And Susie, you participate a little bit in um, in our uh, spirits in the evening, right? Yeah, I like the margarita. But in small quantity. Okay. <laughs> and Mexican Coke. And she likes Mexican Coke. Oh. She is. It's such a difference. In, in, in fact, she's a Coke addict. <gasps> we go through Coca-Cola in this house like it was going out of business. So was that a couple Cokes a day or? Yeah. I don't know. No. Huh? no. Uh, but the Mexican Cokes are in the big bottles. Yeah. Oh, no, they're, they're 16 ounce bottles. Yeah. So it's basically just but a Mexican taller Coke. Coke. Is that yeah, what it is? Sure. Okay. Well, and they use cane sugar, I think. They don't use fructose in their, in their Cokes. Well, what you're doing, you're doing all the right things, obviously. So no, the, the little bit of the martini and the little bit of margarita is yeah. working beautifully for you both. So um, a beautiful life, beautiful people. I am so fortunate to have had the opportunity to share some time with you. And thank you for sharing with your fellow members as well. Um, Again, uh, Dick and Susie uh, Schumacher, thank you. Thank you.